Today's a quick one. We're just going to load a GLTF model and put it in the scene. That's it. Well, okay. There's a couple of other things we're going to do to make it look cool. We're going to use an HDR loader to load an HDR image, an ultra HDR image, and use that as the environment lighting for our scene. We're going to add this kind of nebula looking thing in the background as well as a star field. So, okay, a couple of things. Let's go. This is the basic template. You can download this from my GitHub. Um, all it does is instantiate uh, a 3.js scene and a renderer. And it, I also add the orbit controls and just slap a geometry in the scene so we have something to start with. And I'm going to lose that geometry and instead load my own geometry using the GLTF loader. Import GLTF loader. And that's in the 3.js example files from... That's exactly where. Let's instantiate the loader. Const gltf loader is equal to a new gltf loader. And I could do it this way. Thank you. I have a directory in the project files called assets. Inside it is this astronaut.glb. GLB is the file extension for a binary GLTF. I've passed this thing here. This is a callback function. And the callback function says, hey, with that data you just got, I'm calling it GLTF. Pull out this, this thing called a scene. You know what? The best way to illustrate this is to just console.log that stuff, GLTF. And let's see what we get. It's a JavaScript object, and it's got all of these properties. The property that we're interested in is this scene property. So let's load, let's log that out. It's a 3JS group, and inside it, it has some children. Let's log that out. That's just a simple JavaScript array, and inside it is a 3JS mesh. And let's, let's log that. Its material is a mesh standard material. Let's just see what it looks like. We've introspected, we've looked into what is being loaded. Let's go ahead and use it. I'm just gonna grab that scene. And I want to, this line, this bit here says, hey, loop over everything in that scene. And if, the, if there's something in there that's a, a child, that's a mesh, then do this thing. Take the, the geometry pop property of that mesh and center it. I'm just going to turn that off for now. Um, and then scene.addAstronaut. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, there he is. There's my astronaut. Um, let's turn off this cube rotation <clears throat> just by commenting it out. And let's remove the cube from the scene. Good. And there's our astronaut. He's standing on a point in the middle of the scene. That's not great. That's what this geometry.center is. You know, it says, move him from where he is to the center of the screen, like so. Cool. That's how you use, oh, I wanted to talk about the other way to load something. You can load it asynchronously. Let's comment all of that out, but we'll leave it there for reference. And let's say const astronaut is equal to await. I'm using a top level await uh, gfloader.load async that asset. Um, I guess you would call that astro scene because as we know, our astro glb, that, that makes more sense. I think we could just add the astro glb right to the scene. Let's, let's try it. Scene.add astro glb no not seen the whole darn thing let's see what happens okay it doesn't work um it's not an instance of object 3d but the bet you the scene is even though it's it's called a scene i, I think it's an object 3d so that's another way to load it uh, fewer lines of code using this asynchronous load instead i could still run this code here um this bit here 
uncomment it. Boy, that, that's kind of confusing, isn't it, what I just did? Sorry. Let's remove this to make it clean. I'm going to stick with the async code for now. Um, the astronaut is just the scene. And then I'll traverse that astronaut and do that same thing. I'll center it up and then add it to the scene. How does that look? It looks the same. Okay, but we're sticking with the asynchronous. A couple more fun things to do. Inside the project files, there's another uh, shortcut. There's another little library. Get Starfield. Yeah. Oh, no, that's not right. Nice try. Okay, like that. And I want to add that Starfield to the scene. And while I'm at it, I'm going to turn up the and the hemisphere light, which is really kind of an ambient light. Okay, so const stars is equal to a new, oh, is, is equal to get star field. And we can pass in number of stars, but I'm not going to, and then just scene.add stars. And that should give us stars. Already looking a lot better, right? With the stars in there. I do like those stars. Real quick to just wave some hands around what get starfield is doing. This is a separate little JavaScript file with a function called get starfield and a default number of 500 stars. What's it doing? It's got this little helper method to generate a random sphere point. That is to say, a, a, an imaginary sphere, in this case the radius is either t uh, 25 or 50. Okay, so there's some depth in there creating this random sphere point and then returning this vector three position, its hue and a min distance. I don't know what I need min distance for. Then I'm just creating a JavaScript, sorry. Then I'm creating a 3JS points object and populating it with points from that random sphere point helper and colors too. Yeah, and then I return the points and I add it to the scene here. That's it. You could also say num stars is 50,000. Let's see how bonkers that looks. Oh, look at how bonkers that looks. Oh, I like it too. It's too many stars. It's too many stars, 5,000. Not bad, but I liked, wait, is that the default? No, 500 is the default. I like 500. That feels like outer that feels like outer space to me. A couple of things to sweeten it up a little more. Instead of using a hemisphere light and I could add a const um, sunlight is equal to a new 3 dot directional light and set its position and add it to the scene. scene dot add sunlight. Thank you. I could do that too. In this case, it's just on the Z. I'm gonna move it over on the X axis a little bit so we get a little bit of an angle. And just to really see it, let's turn off the hemisphere light. We could just see the, the directional light. Yeah, we could do that to light the scene. We could change its color or beef, beef up its intensity. And we can add back in the hemisphere light for some variety like so. Not bad, it looks pretty cool. Um, also, in this, with this handy dandy astronaut tra traverse method, method where I'm modifying the model in some way, in this case centering it, I can also modify its material. Um, here's how to know what's happening. I'm gonna say console.log child.material. I could just log child. Let's just take a look at that. It's a mesh standard material. So no, I can I know that I can manipulate that mesh standard material in some way. And the way I want to manipulate it is to make it shinier. Let's say child.material.roughness is equal to zero. Let's see what that looks like. Do you see some more highlights? See the little flickering highlights on his helmet and on his body? Eh, whatever. Check this out, child.material.metalness equals one. So now it's like a metal spacesuit and, okay, not really great. Gonna say that's not so great. Let's comment that out. 
back to where we were and let's try some environment lighting oh yes oh hell yes import ultra hdr loader from loaders thank you and let's instantiate it and then load an ultra hdr image where do we do that how about right below where the astronaut is const um hdr loader is equal to a new ultra hdr loader and then we could load it out load yeah let's do that this is synchronous doesn't matter if this were something for production then we would we would like to handle loading assets a little differently i'm just showing off how to do stuff but you would do it differently in a production situation i happen to have in the project files this lonely road afternoon pure sky.2k is that really what it's called it sure is what a long name so um let's turn this off and let's just log it out console.log hdr let's see what it looks like it looks broken is what it looks like why is that why is it broken oh we we oh we don't have that file we can't find this ultra hdr loader um yeah, forgot to mention that it doesn't exist. <laughs> doesn't exist in 3JS prior to version uh, 164. So let's, I happen to have the newer version um, and that'll be included in the project files. You won't encounter this error. Error. You won't encounter this error. And can, uh, there, okay, so there's the data texture. The, the, let's say the mapping is this and set the environment to this. I could also, just so we can see it, say scene.background is equal to the HDR as well. And let's see what that looks like. Boom. Oh, that's kind of cool. So you can see the image. Oh, let's get rid of our existing lights. We don't need these lights anymore because we're using this, this line here. If I comment out this line, we'll miss those lights very much. But if we use that line, scene.environment now it's lit by the image huh and you can see the image but i don't want to see the image turn it off boom now our astronaut is lit by that hdr image that ultra hdr image i want to turn back on this metalness and roughness because i think it looks pretty cool look at that There you have an astronaut floating in space from loading a GLTF file in 3JS. I think it looks so cool. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to discuss. Oh yeah, we could just give him a little bit of rotation. Oh, what's his, what's his name? What are we calling him? Oh, we're calling astro we're calling him astronaut. So let's just let's just move him around on the y axis. Like so. And then he'll he can just orbit like that or if that's too weird equals math.sin um t times 0 0.001 uh times 0 0.1. What the hell does that do? t equals 0. Here's what that does. He moves so slowly. Let's move him a little bit faster. He'll just kind of rock back and forth like a baby. Times two and slow this down to two five. Oh, it's really raining. Yeah, look at that. That's still too fast, right? Yeah, like that. I can make him swing wildly like so. I just think that looks so nice. That's it for now. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.